Hey y'all, Courtney Lyons here with Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend and it is time for another whipping chat. There is a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first off, I am working on Rose Library. I feel like it's been a really long time because I was working on NFL and then I worked on a couple of my other kits and added a couple more to squares done to them as well as I actually have finished my Starry Night, the Diamond Dots Walmart Special Edition version. Turned out really, really good. You'll see a post review coming up next week because I'm doing a lot to get ready and still have content for when I'm gone on our on our long trip. We're gonna be it's almost gonna be two weeks. So I'm trying to put any extra content that I'm like that can be kind of put up later and have that be during that time that I'm gone. So you'll see a post review. It's a quick one. I think it's like 12 minutes long. But anyway, and then I'm using my Bijou Bliss tray. I don't know where my stopper just went. So I don't have my stopper and that makes me sad because I like the stopper. And then my usual haunts when it comes to my pens. I am usually using all three of these, but what's special about this kit is that I have a challenge of only single placing and this is the most comfortable single placer for me so I will be using this I might switch out my diamond or my, I might switch out my glue dots I haven't decided yet because it is super sticky and sometimes no matter how dirty you try to get it it just doesn't work and you just have to switch it out I don't know glue dots can be finicky but I love it when you get it in the perfect spot okay and then tweezers for ABs and gosh, I love this kit so much and I've actually really enjoyed single placing it and I'm excited to add more to it because I feel like it's been so long since I've had progress on it. I think I might focus on this one kit. I'm going back and forth. I'm sure you guys have like listened on other other videos and been like, well, I thought you were going to do this. <laughs> it just changes. Right now I'd like to focus on this one for a while. But it is single place, so I might only get a few squares done before I'm like, ooh, I need some multi-placing in my life again. Okay, so lots of fun things to talk about this week. Uh, this whipping chat, I should say, I only do whipping chats every couple weeks because I feel like there's really not a lot interesting going on in my life after just one week. Except the exception would be this whip and chat I feel like I have so much to talk about that I'll try to be succinct because there's actually a lot of things that have happened so which is funny <laughs> but yeah so let me start with um today is well for me I'm doing this the day before so for you guys happy 4th of July I don't know if you guys will watch this on 4th of July but I will post it on 4th of July so that's fun and exciting, especially with all the craziness going on right now in our country. I think it's good to just kind of sit down and do things with your family. Not initially sit down, I'm sitting down, <laughs> but you know, doing fun things with the family and celebrating our country because while things are crazy, we are still very blessed to live here. And I always try to remember that. So happy 4th of July and I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope you guys have good plans. Um, really fast before I talk to, about my plans, uh, you can see here, for those of you who might not have seen the video of all the changes I planned on making on this kit, go ahead and watch that after the weapon chat. <laughs> I'll, put it, I'll put it in the comments below if I can remember, or I mean description. But I have some really fun changes. One of those is this right here, the changes in the goblet, I've made changes in the, can you see these buttons? I don't know, no, you can't see the buttons. But there's another one here that I'll get started. Let me see if I can push it so you can see. Yeah, there you go, the couch buttons are metallic pinks, like two different pink metallics. It is so much fun to change this one up. It was already beautifully charted, but it, it's always fun to do things and make it your own. So I just need to find, I need a better setup for, okay, this is the one. No, that's the one I just took out. Anyway, I'll keep talking as I'm looking for the right color. So, uh, we what we're doing for 4th of July, in the morning we have a... Oh, here it is. In the morning we have a breakfast. It's a church breakfast. 
and it's at like 7 30 which is really early and so we're we kind of we're trying to decide do we want to go because is it going to be really early <laughs> do we want to get up that early but we did we did decide to go mostly for the kids and also because then we won't have to worry about breakfast too and to support was that the right color i feel like that's off and just to support church and be there and um, especially for the people who took the time to put it together which is super nice i mean it's all on a volunteer basis no one's getting paid for it so it's just like really thoughtful that people are doing that and um it will be fun it's it's kind of the time but it also makes sense because right after that we are going to go do the parade i'm not a big fan of parades i think they're <laughs> Here comes the <laughs> Scrooge Courtney. I think they're loud and I think it's scary as a parent because you're constantly just having to watch the kids and make sure they're not running out into the street in front of as slow as people are going. It's just, it's, 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 hmm. I get stressed out with it. And it's usually hot. I don't think it'll be that hot tomorrow here. But usually it's hot and then you're just standing there and usually people have like, gone really early oh my gosh i'm being so complaining i'm sorry i don't mean to complain it's just not my thing but the kids have fun and that's okay so we will go and have fun with them and i do have chocolate in my hand good gracious but yeah so that'll be fun for them and it's fun if it's fun for them i i enjoy it. it's fun for me so then the next thing that we're going to do i'm going to start working on some of these babies such a pretty color the next thing we're going to do is we got invited to a dinner or it's more like a lunch thing look how pretty those are and so we're going to go do that and then of course for the night is fireworks and we're really 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 hoping you know what I didn't do is put the barriers around the edge you know what I, I'm hoping that the kids will sleep in but I'm not sure that they will Anyway, those are our plans. It should be really fun. The fireworks are going to be really cool this year because they, we, since we live on a lake, this is the first time that we'll be watching fireworks here, even though this is the same place we come every summer for vacation. This is the first time that we'll be here during the 4th of July. And so that's going to be really fun because we can just go down and sit on the dock and go watch the fireworks from the dock. And... I just think that's going to be a blast. It's just gonna be cool and cozy and that we can just see it from our house and then go up to bed and don't have to worry about packing kids into the car and coming home. So I am very excited for that, we all are. And yeah, we, that'll be fun. So the other thing, what is this? Random drill. I guess that's it for our 4th of July. I shouldn't say that's it, that's quite a bit, but. <laughs> But that is all now for our 4th of July plans. For those of you wondering what I'm doing, I love these. These are like aluminum craft, bendable craft. I forget what they're called. I'll try to remember to link them down below. And if I don't and you want them, message me because I will let you know where I got them from. Well, I got these from Julie, actually. Um, thank you so much, Julie, when she sent over a kit. And I see we went to the next one back and it was for they people use them for straighteners to make their drills really straight and then i found out they work really well under those perforated covers to make it so they don't move and they lift up a little bit or not so they don't move so that they lift up a little bit so you can put drills easily underneath um and you can especially see where it ends off it really is super helpful and useful and i always do my drills my ab drills most of the time i do often now use a wet cloth to mold if i'm going to multi-place but this is all single placing anyway so it doesn't even matter did i single place all that before so I, I haven't done this for a while so i'm really worried that now that i didn't single place this but i'm pretty sure i single placed it i'm pretty sure i didn't use any multi-placer anyway now i'm on a tangent where was i I don't know that's it for fourth of july should be fun really excited and yeah let's see what else well um 
let's do a cute kid story of what they're doing. Like, Reese one time, his new favorite, I think I've said this already before, like, one of the things he loves to say is, uh-oh, bro, uh-oh, because he is full-on toddler mode and breaking everything. Like, everything's breaking. He, like, touches it and it breaks, and he's like, what the heck just happened? And we're all like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> it's like his superpower. And one of the, well, so he knows where you go, uh-oh, it's broken. Oh, no, don't do that. And so now that's his favorite line is, uh-oh, bro, uh-oh. And one time he'd end up in bed with us in early in the morning, and he'd fallen back to sleep. And I think I was already, I want to say I was already up. So I think Greg was telling me this after the fact, because I don't think I was there when it actually happened. But yeah, that's right. So he said that he had reached over to get a drink from his water bottle and that he accidentally instead knocked it over. And it's one of those big, like almost Stanley Cup like things. I know my husband does not have a Stanley Cup, but it was practi it's practically a Stanley Cup. <laughs> But, um, he, so it knocked it over, made a big sound, and the first thing Reese says, he, like, sits up all of a sudden, he and his eyes were still, uh, like, closed, he goes, uh-oh, bro, <laughs> he says, uh-oh, broken, uh-oh, bro, <laughs> he, like, went straight from sleeping to, like, suddenly awake, saying, uh-oh, it's broken, <laughs> he just cracked up. And then another funny thing is, this is actually just today, Greg and I were looking out our the window of the kitchen and just kind of looking out at the lake. Well, Oakley's right out there on the porch area and he's, we were like, what is he doing? And we're looking at him and he's, he's having a pretend battle with someone else, but there's obviously no one there. So it's just like him and this like imaginary person he's having a battle with. <laughs> It was so intense. It was so funny. Because he's, like, doing his best kicks and punches and stuff. And then you can tell when he gets punched because his, like, head goes back. And he's like, ah, and he kind of falls to the ground a little. And you can see he's starting to, like, pass out. <laughs> and then suddenly comes to and does this, like, roundhouse move. And we watched him for a few minutes. It was so funny. So funny. And then he went around the house and we couldn't see him anymore. But... We just, I love this age and their imagination, and Zinnia does the same thing where she is, um, she, except she has her little horses, and she'll do pretend with her horses and stuff. Just such a fun age. She's lost both her front teeth now, and so she doesn't have any teeth on the top in the very front, and it's so funny, and she talks so cute now. She has a, just a touch of a lisp enough to, like, when she gets talking fast, it's just so funny. So yeah, that's a uh, cute, funny things to kind of lift your day of kids doing goofy things. Um, I did want to talk about uh, the sailboat and the lightning incident, the lightning storm sailboat incident that happened. This was this last Monday, and it was. It was, uh, it was, it was intense, it, and then it was also, uh, kind of funny. Not funny. Funny after the fact sort of thing. Um, but, so this is what happened. I was actually diamond painting upstairs. It started raining, and then I was like, well, it's raining, let's get cozy. Everybody turned on the TV, and then I came up and started diamond painting, and then it really started to get windy and like really blustery and lightning and thunder and the thunder was getting was really loud and we're like oh that's so cool and Greg came up and we kind of stood and watched at the window here because the upstairs window overlooks the lake and just kind of watching everything out there seeing if we could see the lake get hit by lightning and I had Shay's live on kind of in the background because I was listening to it while I was diamond painting and kind of chatting every once in a while leaving a comment and it was funny because we were standing there and everyone like I can't I wasn't like full-on in the conversation at this time since we were distracted by the lightning storm but it was so funny because we heard something along the lines of what was it I can't remember some like silly potty humor <laughs> it was 
going on in the chat and Shay was talking about and I was kind of I remember thinking I was like wait what <laughs> listening to her a little bit as I was looking out the window and I don't think Greg was paying attention but it was funny and so uh yeah Shay if you're watching this it, it was funny to be like whoa thunderstorm wait what did Shay just say <laughs> was this about uh, like, uh, farting with a it was like a a, a squishy that farted and like a juicy fart like it's so funny sorry if you guys are like what the heck go and watch Shay's last life <laughs> and you'll know what I'm talking about because it's still there um the comments you won't see all the comments but the but the uh you, you'll hear you'll hear Shay it it was pretty funny because I was kind of like wait what, what's going on <laughs> and I'm distracted from the thunderstorm because I was trying to hear what was going on but um Anyway, moving on from that, I noticed that we, we noticed as we were looking out the window that there was kind of, because it was so rainy and stuff that it was pretty foggy over the lake, but we're like, is that a sailboat in the lake? And <clears throat> sure enough, it started getting a little bit closer and we're like, oh my gosh, that's a sailboat. There's a sailboat on the lake. And we're like, that's not good. <laughs> and... um like that is crazy that someone is on a sailboat right now in this weather because it's so dangerous i mean the sailboat has and we found this out later it has an aluminum mast in the middle of the lake during a very very strong lightning storm but keep in mind that this storm i don't think i said this the storm came on really fast like it was bright and sunny then it got a little bit rainy and that's kind of when we all decided to come up here and just do inside stuff and then just bam lightning storm just really out of it just it was a little bit crazy so anyway we're kind of like what the heck is that guy doing out there i hope he's okay he must have gotten stuck out there and as we were watching we were noticing that he was getting closer and closer to us. We're like, oh, he's trying to make it to shore. Good, good. He's going to try to make it to shore. And we were, just, we were seriously praying for him that he wouldn't get hit by lightning. And he was actually telling us later that he was holding a rubber phone case. And that's the only rubber thing that he had is his rubber phone case to see if, like, if he were to get hit by lightning, maybe, maybe it would do something. I don't know if it would, but it, it maybe it does. Do I want that AB there? No, I want this just completely metal maybe i'll change it up later anyway as we're watching i'm like greg i'm pretty sure he's coming to our dock because our dock kind of goes in just a little bit and i might need to use my hands to explain this so our dock goes there's our dock right here and another dock over here and then on this side of our dock is like really big rocky area and on this side of this dock is kind of the stairs and then a, a little bit further really close to this dock over here is a rocky beach and there's really not a lot of rocky beaches or sand beaches here i mean some people do have sandy beaches but it's a lot of times it's go straight to the dock because this whole area is very rocky and very steep slopes down to the water and so because of that it's a little bit hard for people to have like actual beaches um, a lot of times people really can't get their boats in and out of the water unless they go to the marina so anyway having said that i think and, and actually he told us this later but at the time we were thinking he must see our beach and trying to make it to the beach and so greg's like well i'm gonna go down and help him so greg hops down and I'm, i'll pop this all up on a video in a little bit but um greg hops on down to go rescue him and i have on video of them kind of pulling in the sailboat out of the water and in the video you can actually even hear the lightning or the you can't hear the lightning see lightning you can hear the thunder in the background and it, it i just i was just like please don't get hit by lightning greg like because he had hopped into the water and the other guy had hopped into the water because keep in mind that there are some getting to be some pretty big waves now and they're trying to get the boat working and get them sail down so that it's not push, pushing them into the docks on either side. And so they're both in the water with this lightning storm. And I'm just praying that no, the lightning does not hit. And luckily lightning did not hit. So I'll show that video right here.
I know. Uh oh. You're not supposed to be out there with lightning. Big metal pole. Looks like he's struggling. He's okay. Oh good. He's getting some help. Oh sheesh. Look, I know, go look out the window in the other bedroom where you can see. Well, they need to get away from the sailboat because there's a yeah. giant metal pole with lightning in the middle of the water. Uh -oh. They're trying to get, he, that guy's trying to get off. Mm -hmm. They came to our, our... What happened? Water, yeah. What happened? Well... Help that yeah, Dad's helping them down there right now. What happened? I know, they need to tie it up and... Well, they'll probably try to get what up happened? on the... Oh, I don't know yet, but I think he's telling him to open. I think he's trying to get him to uh, pull up onto the rocky beach part so that they can pull because it's wide enough they can pull the sailboat all the way onto the rocky beach, and then. Um, Are they gonna swim? I don't know. I think that looks like what they're trying to do is pull it to the rocky beach to be in the water with the lightning if the. That's one big metal pole in the middle of the sailboat. Oh, see that lightning? Yeah. Isn't that like, it's so scary. I, I know I sounded very lighthearted because the kids were right there, but my heart was like beating so fast and I was so worried for them. Anyway, so he actually, actually at that point I was like, I, they had started to come up. I'm like, well, I need to use the bathroom because I had been holding it for a while. So I went to go use the bathroom and then I came out and the kids said that Greg had already taken the guy home and I was like oh that was fast I was like planning on making some hot chocolate for him and warming him up and just making sure everything is okay and uh so I never actually met him at that point but when Greg came back from dropping him off he was like oh I had to take him back because he knew his wife would be worried about him and um I don't think he had his cell phone with him so he couldn't call his wife and because obviously most people were. I don't know how he had a had a rubber I don't know how he had a rubber phone case but not a cell phone I'm not sure how that worked but I do know that he wasn't able to get a hold of his wife and so it was when he showed up to the house there was actually a policeman there who had just arrived because his wife had called the police so it's good that he went home so and then what's crazy is like the thunderstorm like an hour later completely gone really hot and muggy and sunny and we're like that was why it's like it never happened <laughs> it was so crazy and yeah it was uh it was pretty wild and he actually came he he was only a, about a half mile down the road from us and he actually came back to get his sailboat pretty fast after that. He it is almost as soon as it got sunny, he came over to grab it. Um, there were other storms later that day, so I think he wanted to just get it home before there were any storms and have the chance of it getting washed away. So he did. And then uh, I went down there to help him because I think Greg had been trying to get Reese to sleep. So I went down and helped push him off and we were talking and he had like a bloodied up elbow and his, I think his knee was hurt or his leg was hurt or something like that. And, um, but anyway, what was nice is they got each other's numbers, Greg and, um, his name is, well, I won't actually, sorry. I'm not gonna say his name. I just realized I, I probably shouldn't say people's names. So um, anyway, this guy um, and he actually invited us over to kind of just have like a snack and take Greg sailing uh, later. So I think that actually might've been Sunday. That might've been Sunday. And then Tuesday was when we went over and we visited and I met his wife and she was just so kind. She's an artist 
and I got to see some of her art and we talked um, religion, we talked kids, she, they're older, they're an older couple. Um, and so she has grandkids and they talked about, I don't know, we talked about all sorts of fun stuff and it was really cool. And anyway, so it was wild, the whole thing. And, but what's funny too is after the, after all that craziness of first getting him out of the water and everything calmed down and Greg went to go start putting Reese to sleep, or I, I don't even remember, it wasn't long after the whole sailboat incident where we kind of all calmed down and then I hopped back onto the live because it really didn't actually take that long from start to finish of going down and getting the boat, saving the boat, and then Greg taking off to go take him home. And so I hopped back on the live and I was like, so I, I, I was like, oh, what I miss? I don't know, I can't remember what I said. I was like, what did I miss? I had to, we had to go rescue a sailboat out from a thunderstorm. And uh, I think she, and Shay, Shay read that and she was really confused. And I was like, I'll put it in the whip and chat. So <laughs> I'll definitely contact her and let her know about the whip and chat so she can hear the whole story because that was probably confusing. But anyway, that is that story. It was pretty wild. It was, um, I'm just glad everybody is okay. Really. I'm just, that's what I'm glad for. So, and that no one got hit by lightning because that would have been awful. Gosh, that would have been awful. So, um, another thing that's happened. Oh, the next story I wanted to share with you guys was my church story embarrassment of just I swear I try so hard not to call attention to myself but my kids will do it for me <laughs> that not that sounds funny to someone who has a channel on YouTube I just mean like uh okay we're gonna start over this is what happened so I sing in the choir at church I love it I love singing I love singing in the choir I think that it's so fun to do the different parts and everything like that and which color next let's see they had a song that we had been practicing so I really wanted to be part of it but my husband his church calling is where he is what we call it is that he's in the bishopric so he actually sits up at the stand and conducts every few months and just is there in general he's just one of the leaders so he goes and he sits up at at the stand and i i sit down in the congregation which is not any it's not a huge deal and everybody that's there just really really helps like a ton and helps out with um just keeping the kids entertained with their kids or they always have more toys and snacks they're sharing and we just sit there so that if i have to take the baby out then the other two aren't left alone it's just it's such a good community it feels like a family it's amazing so it's not usually a big deal and um until you realize that if i need to be up there at the same time like the only thing too that's hard is that reese when he sees greg up there wants to go up to greg and Finally, Greg's like, just let him come up because eventually he's going to get bored and come back down to you and realize it's not fun up here. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, maybe that's what I need to do. Let's see, it's hard to put it back with the camera there. What color next? Let's do this one. Anyway, so with the choir, I have to go up there to sing. And usually most of the choir sits on, on the days that the choir does sing. They'll start out up there so people aren't coming and going. But obviously for me, that wasn't really feasible. So I figured, well, what I'll do, and I told Greg this ahead of time. I was like, I'm going to hand Reese to you when I sing in the choir, and then I'll come grab him on my way back down after the choir piece is over and before the next speaker. Um, just i figured that was like the best way rather than trying to have like i don't i don't know what i was gonna do with reese because if i left him with someone he would have cried and freaked out and wanted to be up with me and that would have been just yeah so in retrospect i should have just asked if someone would be willing to take him out for me beforehand and just he just doesn't do well with other people so sure enough time to sing and i hand him to greg well, Oakley wanted to sing in the choir too, so he went up with us. He has a sweet little voice, and so does Zinnia, but she wasn't planning on coming up to sing. 
except that she did like halfway through the song decide to come up into the choir and I was mortified I was like why are you, why did you come up here <laughs> and like it's a really family friendly church and ward so it's really not it really wasn't a big deal but in my mind I was just kind of like okay well I already handed Reese to Greg and he's I can tell as we we're singing Reese is getting pretty squirrely up there and then when Zinnia popped up I was just kind of like trying not to make a big deal of her squishing her way in through people to come stand next to me and then when she had done that after the choir was done after the song was done I sat down and then the speaker stood up to go speak granted this is all behind the podium this is all happening behind the podium and then I realized too late after he'd already stood up to start speaking that I was supposed to have grabbed Reese and gone back down but I was just kind of flustered with my other two kids being up there which they stayed up there with me and oh no a bug you see that <laughs> and then so I went and I just stayed there and then I realized it that how was I going to get Reese so then I was like well instead of walking behind okay so I need to do a visual for you so I'm sitting back here with the choir piano organ Greg is sitting right here, podium is right here, speakers sit here, speaker stands here, and talks. I'm back here with two kids. And Reese, Greg is right here holding Reese. So we have all three kids behind the podium. And so finally I stand up with the kids and I'm like very quietly try, because here's the speaker, but there's some stairs right here and there's some stairs on the other side. Well, I grab the kids and I walk this way and we go out the door, go all the way around the church um, because it's kind of like a big loop and come back into the chapel this way and sit down at this point though. Cause I was going to come grab Reese at that point, dropping the kids off on the bench and grab Reese. Granted the speaker is speaking this whole time. So I see Greg is no longer in his spot here. There's a little nook over here. And that's where he went behind because Reese had been freaking out. And so Greg is right back here. There are so many people in the congregation over there. And so Greg's over here and Reese is crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Like, do I stand up here? I, sorry, I gotta keep, keep going. But um, do I stand up and get Reese and draw more attention to myself that way? Or do I go back and, or do I just wait? Like, and just see what Greg does. The problem is, and this is the big problem, Greg is in charge of conducting this month, or not anymore, but that last month, which means that he goes up and does the announcements and tells who's going to speak next, and then at the very end, after all the speakers, he thanks the speakers, he announces what song's going to come next, and so Greg can't leave with the baby. He just can't. It's just, I mean, he'd have to walk out and then I guess come back in, or I don't know, he just... He was probably at a loss. He's like, what do I do? And so finally, as I'm sitting there, just kind of like, I felt close to tears, honestly. And I stood up from over here in the congregation now, back over here, speakers right here around, and he's still speaking. Bless his heart, he doesn't miss a beat. He just keeps going. And then I come grab Reese. But as I'm walking back out from the nook to go take Reese out, because he was kind of freaking out, and Greg starts to come over here to sit back in his spot behind the podium, I, there's a piece of the wall, just kind of a decorative piece sticking out behind the wall this way, and I smack his head against the wall as I'm walking by. Poor baby. I felt so bad. And of course, he's like, ah! just loses it completely. Like, uh, he, it hurt. And so it was like a screaming cry. And so I'm like trying to like bury his ma like face a little bit into my shoulder without smothering him and to kind of dampen the sound as I'm like can't run but fast walking out of the chapel and I just I was like I was like sweaty and hot and really close to tears and luckily there were like four other moms out in the hallway 
And as I talk to them, they're like, oh, you should just this two years ago, this and this, or when so-and-so was little, this happened. And bless them because they were like, they made me feel so much better. They're like, we have been there. We have done that. I promise you no one noticed besides you. And if they did, they probably just got a kick out of it. <laughs> so they made me feel so much better. But sorry if that was like super long winded with all the like everything that happened but that is what happened and it was awful <laughs> but also and now I, I'm still not to the point where I think it's funny but other people did and some people did say things but not in a mean way some people were like um I, I can't remember some people said a couple of things that just to say like laugh about it and be like oh girl we've been there so they were super kind I knew they would be it was just I didn't like having the attention I, what bothered me the most was that the speaker, and who's just one of the kindest people I've ever known, um, when he was talking, he, uh, like, I just felt bad that I was ta he he prepared this talk, and I was bringing the attention on me. So I that's what bothered me the most, that I was most embarrassed about, because I was like, that was so rude of me. And even though I, I just... I did do the best I could in the situation. I I just felt bad. But anyway, that was the embarrassing story of this whip and chat because I feel like there's always something to be embarrassed about that I've done. <laughs> it's just oh, how my life is, but that's okay. It was it is funny after the fact. Not quite yet for me, but it will be eventually, I know. <laughs> so there's that story. And, um, ooh, the fire alarm story, that also happened this last couple weeks. So, it's so weird. I might, I don't like fire alarms. I'm sure they're there to keep us safe. Well, I know they're there, that's what they're for. But, I can't stand them. I hate when they start beeping, and then it takes us for, I'm a short person. So, I, even at the stool or ladder, I struggle being able to get them down. Even when you take the battery out and replace them, somehow you don't get them in right, and then they keep beeping at you, and then you have to get the ladder again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really sounding complaining today. But, yeah, fire alarms and I are not friends, and they do weird things sometimes. So, there was one time in Utah where I was pregnant with Reese and <clears throat> the fire alarm did some really weird things where it just kept beeping and then suddenly after we were asleep went beep, 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 beep. it just did this weird not gone off but beeped at us I know it was the battery but I didn't know at first that when you take the battery out it will keep beeping at you because it has an internal battery or it's connected to the electrical, I forget what it is. So that if you do take the batteries out, it can still work or something weird like that. It's like a backup battery. I don't know, someone who knows more than me, message me or like put that in the comments of what you guys know about alarm, fire alarms because all I know is that they freak me out and they, <laughs> they're scary and loud, they're so loud. So, um, but when I was pregnant, there was only one bed I could sleep in, and that was my daughter's bed, and so I totally kicked her out of it. Um, sometimes she'd just sleep in there with me, but uh, it was just happened to be that room, so I was sleeping alone, and it just suddenly started going off, and it really freaked me out, and it freaked my daughter and my son out, but especially my daughter, because that their room, or his room, was across from mine, and, like, they were still young enough that they just, like, slept, and, like, one of them had the top part of the bed the other one had the trundle because I kicked my daughter out poor thing it was the softest bed it was the only thing that worked with my hips or I could not walk the next day but anyway so really freaked my daughter out she was just screaming and screaming she could not sleep alone for weeks after that and so the and what the the hard part was that or the scary part was that it my husband came and took out the battery and then so that we could sleep and then the next he would fix it the next morning but then it went off another time because of the stupid internal battery thing and let's see done with that color and so then <clears throat> like an hour later it did it again and that time freaked me out because i at the moment like at the time when i first woke up i was like why is it going off again because i didn't realize that it did have an internal battery and so i was like it's haunted 
I'm like, what is going on? This is so freaky. And my daughter freaked out again, like screaming. And so Greg came over unplugged the whole thing practically broke it to pieces trying to get it to stop beeping and then we all slept in our big master bed after that because we were all freaked out so this happened again the this last couple weeks here and it just there's just something weird about i don't like fire alarms i just think that there's something weird about them and so it the whole thing i won't go over the whole story because it's practically the same thing happened again and my daughter the poor thing was so freaked out the next morning she obviously was like sleep deprived and it was just they're scary like does anybody else have issues with fire alarms is it just me like that's just one of the many stories that i have with fire alarms they do weird things and yeah they they freak me out but that was a very sleepless night that night all right other than that it's been fairly uneventful but uh, you know what i would call those fairly eventful things <laughs> we did go on a hike um this last week I'll try to pop up a video if I remembered, or I think a picture. Oh wait, why am I getting anyone out? This is the color I want. Uh, a picture of what, a kind of the area. It is my favorite hike I've, I don't know. There's a hike in Hawaii that I've been on that is just gorgeous because you go into a bamboo forest before you go into this like waterfalls with the vines and the everything. It just, that's just, that was magical. And that was the best hike I've ever been on. That was in Oahu and oh yeah 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 and no yeah okay sorry <laughs> it doesn't matter but the my next favorite hike it would be this one out here that is just so gorgeous i'll pop up some pictures but it is a it was was this sunday no this is Today's Wednesday. So this was Monday that we went on this hike in the afternoon, or maybe it was Tuesday. Oh my gosh, it doesn't matter. Whatever it was, it was a day that was raining. <laughs> and it was not raining when we first started out, and we thought, well, it might rain, but if so, it's okay. And we did end up getting caught in the rain, and it was so much fun. The kids at first were like, eh, I don't like this, Mom. And then we were kind of like, just enjoy it because it makes everything look green and it is beautiful and it wasn't really very cold so it was just kind of nice <laughs> so that that was really fun and then yeah that's kind of what we've been doing we really want to go see inside out so maybe i'll move on to things that i have been listening to or reading i did finish divine rivals it was so good and i really really want to finish something vows why can't i remember the name of it anyway it's the book of the month for the discord on sophie's channel sorry sophie's discord her channel is the diamond help desk and it's a really fun discord you guys should go check it out but i think it's called sophie's so I'll try to remember to link it down below and if I forget and you want to know about it let me know anyway so I did read the first one but I didn't get it done in time because I didn't know about it in time to do the discussion but and neither am I think am I gonna get the the second one because it's a duology it's Rebecca Ross is the artist or author it's late guys sorry but yeah, so I'm, I'm sad about that. I think I would have gotten it done, except that it I have a Scribd account and it became not available on the Scribd account anymore. What the heck? Just pop out. There you go. Which makes me sad. And I don't know that I want to pay the $18 on that I'd have to for another credit. But at the same time, I do because it's really good. But I also can just read it because it has the ebook available just not the audiobook so but i don't i haven't had time to just sit and read so i don't think i'll get it done in time but i might still really really try because it would be awesome to be able to 
be part of the discussion. So we'll see how that goes. As far as watching anything, um, I've just been watching YouTube and catching up on news. And I did get stuck on Loki, but not because I didn't want to watch Loki. For those of you who might not know, I did start all the Marvel series to watch it from beginning to end. And then I ended up being like, I don't want to watch all these TV series because there's a ton of them, but just the ones I want and then all the Marvel movies. and Or anything that's canon is pretty much what I said, plus any TV series that I might that I know I would like or have already watched and want to wa watch again. So that's been fun. I did, like I said, not get past Loki yet, and it had nothing to do with Loki not being interesting. I'm having a ton of, I think it's very good. I just need to watch the next season. It just feels like everything else keeps popping up that I need to do or listen to, and so it's kind of been on hold, but I haven't lost interest. I will certainly get back to it. There it is. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I would love to know what you guys are up to. I got a lot of what you guys are working on in my month interview plus whip parade on what, yeah, paintings you're working on. So I love that you guys shared that with me. If you haven't shared that with me, I'd love it if you shared it on here, what it is that you are working on your current whips. And as far as whips go for me, I really wanted to kit up Little Lizard Garden with, because I know that um, Michaela Renee is doing that one soon. So I, we were talking about it and we're like, oh, let's do it together. That'd be really fun. Then I forgot that I put it away in storage for a little while, while, because it's one of the bigger kits that I didn't unbox and put in my portfolio, while everybody's here for vacation. Uh, if you don't know, we have a lot of family that comes up here for vacation, so uh, we just kind of had to consolidate space. And so I'm like, dang it. And then part of me wants to, even though I'm a poly whipper and I love getting out, like having a lot of kits to work on, I am dwindling it because I am going to be leaving for a little bit and I don't want a whole bunch of whips hanging out around. So I probably will actually for a few weeks, I want, this is why I want to work on Rose Library a lot right now. I will probably put it away and roll it up and put it away for a little while somewhere safe so that I can, it's just so big. I don't, it just takes up so much room and then work. What I'll probably do is keep out um, only my three other whips that are big and then I'll probably wrap up all my small whips on my drive and take them with me. And when I go to Utah, but for now that's gonna be, especially I'm keeping out the one with the diamond art because I feel like that would be fun for others to kind of come and do like in the family while they're here to come and do a few drills here or there. And I wouldn't mind the help on it to be honest because it is so high confetti that I, I wouldn't mind people coming and helping in the family. I don't know if that counts as a finish if I get help, but I doubt that there'd be too much help on it. But it might be kind of fun to keep that one out. I think it's artwork that a lot of them would like. And then Walking with the Stars I'll keep out because I actually might take that to Utah slash Arizona with me when I go out there to visit because just the way the canvas is, I f and it's already a damaged canvas, that I'm not going to like the stakes aren't high on that one in case anything happens to it and it'll still be fun to work on it's a really high quality kit it's just that it came damaged and it's a whole thing go look on my channel you'll see a few videos about it it's a create love share one um and then my jaded gem shop I want I I will honestly probably put away for a bit and that's mostly to keep it safe and then I will be, what, how did I miss all that? <laughs> Whatever. But I probably will be kidding, oh no, I know for sure, I will be kidding up in Cat Nido, uh, as a smaller kit to have and as a, a, a whip that's going to be a lot of fun to do with my cat ear trays. So I did get sent cat ear trays, more of them, because we are gonna do a fun project of me kidding up 
the whole cat ear or the whole in cat needle i'm going to kit up the whole thing just in cat eared trays it's going to be awesome so if you guys don't know about the cat eared trays cat eared is the company tray bricks are what they're called and do i have some here let me just show you i don't know if i have them with me did i take them downstairs hold on so these are tray bricks so they automatically have like you don't have to worry about lids because it just opens and when you open them up they're already a tray and they line up really well too so it's great we're going to talk about and a video coming up the end of this week is going to be what how much can you fit in these smaller bigger ones because this is the bigger one and then the smaller ones and which one is going to work best for which amount of drills and then i'm going to be after that video i'll be kidding all of in cat needle up in the cat eared trays that I have, the tray bricks, so that we can see how it is to not have to change out colors even a little bit. Because all I have to do is just grab the correct tray, open it, use it, put it away, grab the next tray, and that's all. So it's going to be probably, I can foresee that the downside would be that it might be a little bit bulky but I think it's so going to be worth it, especially for confetti, because if you're in a spot where there's a lot of confetti, granted, you're not, I'm not going to get a lot of confetti with Incantito, um, but still, like, it really will work really well for a confetti kit because of being able to just have, say, like, this part has all these different colors where I'm going to just have those trays out and then... I don't have to worry about them they're there and i can just open the correct one. Oh, did i forget one of those colors i'm gonna open that one so anyway okay that's going on a lot about that look forward to that video i think it'll be turn out really cool i'm hoping that i can work on that friday night and get it up by sunday is my plan so as far as future videos go i am not going to have a lot of finishes for the month of july and august so i probably will not have a month in review until the end of august rather than at the end of july and then i'll cover july and august just because we're going to be outside a lot i'm not going to be diamond painting as much i'm going to have a lot of family here i'm going to be wanting to spend time with them so for those reasons there i won't be doing as much diamond painting and i'll be honest probably the videos will get especially in the next after a couple weeks from now will be fewer than you're used to seeing but don't worry as soon as things die down i will certainly get back up to doing more videos again but and maybe we'll see i, I might still end up doing a lot of them but as far as when we're gone in utah and and arizona I do have a lot of videos that I have planned that are going to come out. I have two unboxings, one from Unimade and one from Diamonds on Canvas LLC that will be coming out. I've already finished them and scheduled them for when I'm gone. And then I'll also have a post review, which is going to be the, that one is the Diamond Dots Walmart Starry Night one that you guys have probably seen on progress on. And then I will also be having, and the memberships, the members of my channel are actually the ones who got to vote. It was an, a ex member exclusive vote poll on my channel to see what kind of bigger project video that they'd like to see next. And they voted on what are my most anticipated kits. So... I that one will be coming up while I'm gone as well. I am working on getting it filmed and set up and it should be really fun. So look forward to those videos. I probably will stick another one in there somewhere, but you probably probably I'll stretch those four videos out for the time that I'm gone. So there won't be as many like I said, but I will be back and you will not be forgotten about. And I will still have my phone to be able to answer comments. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you made it to the end of this video, um, awesome. And go ahead and put um, a sailboat emoji. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's one of those. 
So thanks again for joining me and I will see you guys on the next whip and chat. And that should hopefully be a couple weeks from now. Okay, bye.